Hey, welcome back to part three of my series on animating and rigging this uh, anti-aircraft gun. In the previous chapter, I showed you how to create cams that are then used to uh, animate the, the guns, so the, the recoil of the guns, so we can turn them on and off. And I showed you how to create this switch that can be used to then turn on and off the engagement of these uh, followers so that the guns either do or don't move. Right, so that was in the last chapter. In this chapter, I'm going to talk about the particle system. Uh, we're going to add particle systems to the guns so that you know tracers come out of the front uh, of the barrels as they recoil. And uh, we'll tie that also into the switch so that the particle system gets turned on and off when we want to either fire or not fire the gun. And then we'll at the very end, we'll add some muzzle flash uh, to the barrels also just to add to the effect. All right, um, I have done some work ahead of time just to try to save some time because I didn't think uh, you necessarily wanted to see me make a bunch of stuff that you probably already know how to make. Um, here's the tracer particle. This is going to be the, the tracer round that, that flies out of here. And it is uh, basically a cylinder that's been stretched, tapered a little bit. And then inside of it is uh, another cylinder, basically a smaller copy of this that is uh, you know, inside there, nested inside there. And the reason I have two of these is because I have two two shaders on this. One is an exterior shader uh, that gives kind of the orange glow of the outside of the tracer. And that's what this guy looks like. And then on the inside, this bit here, uh, the core of it is this inner tracer, which is a, a much brighter, hotter white color. And the effect is you get a kind of a white glow to the middle of the tracer. Um, I don't know if you've ever watched tracers, they typically have a chemical that creates either you know orange or yellow or green shade to it as it flies, but there's also a you know a very bright white hot center to it. So that's the effect I'm trying to create here. And then when we go to render this, uh, I just want to make sure that your motion blur is turned on so you get a nice blur of the tracers as they fly out. One more thing to note is the origin of the particle. You notice that I put it up here at the leading edge of the particle. If we go into ver uh, vertex mode, uh, you can say set uh, cursor to selected, and then if we went back into object mode, you could say set origin to 3D cursor, and that'll put the cursor, put the origin right at the leading edge of the particle. And this will be important later when we use a collision object to turn on and off the bullets coming out of the gun, because Blender uses that origin to determine whether or not the particle has penetrated the collision object. So if your origin's way back here or somewhere else, um, your particle is actually going to penetrate some distance into the uh, collision object and you may not get the results you want. So just put it up there at the leading edge and you should be all right. So that is the trace around itself. Now I've also gone ahead and made the emitter that's going to shoot the particles out. Again, just to save some time. Let me hide the gun barrels for a second. And the emitter is just this little tiny square here. All right, I just created a plane. And you can see the plane points along the y-axis. And if I look at it from the front, you can see that I placed it right in the middle of the gun barrel. And I made it really small because Blender tends to, it can, it can emit the particle from kind of anywhere on this plane. And by making it small, I'm just really limiting uh, where the particle comes from. I want the particles to really make sure they come right down the center of the barrel. So by making a little tiny plane there, I'm going to guarantee that they're in the center of the barrel. Scale, rotation are all applied. So let's take a look at the particle system here. Now the important thing here is the timing of the particles. So if we undo or unhide, and let me select the, the gun for a second, we'll take a look at the, the, uh, you know, the timeline here. So we're on frame one at the beginning of the animation. If I step through here, you can see on frame two, the gun recoils. And so we want our tracer to come out whenever the gun recoils. And then it takes a little few frames to come back. And then scroll in here, you can see that at frame 13, it kicks back again. So we've got 11 frames from frame two to frame 13 is the full cycle for this gun. So we want a tracer round coming out of here you know, basically every 11 frames is what we want. So let me hide this, and hide this, and hide this, and hide this. And now we're just looking at the emitter, right, right here. So what I've done is over here in the particle system, I figured I wanted to render maybe 500 frames. 
And so 500 divided by 11 is 45.454545. So it doesn't, doesn't divide evenly, but it, it means that I'm going to get roughly 45 rounds out of this gun in roughly 500 frames. Uh, but you want things to come out as even integers. So I multiply 45 times 11, right? Because that's how many frames there are per cycle. And 45 times 11 equals 495. But since we're starting on frame 2, I added two frames to that to get 495 full frames for my animation. So there are going to be 495 frames, um, and I'm going to fire 45 rounds out of it. And the lifetime just needs to be bigger than the end frame. That's really the only important thing here is just make sure that the you know your your tracers are coming out at the same frequency that the gun is recoiling. And that's what these settings here do. And then just kind of scrolling down here, you can see my other settings. I've got emit from faces, random, even distribution. Uh, this is not a realistic value. Realistically, these rounds are like 850 meters a second. Um, but going that fast, you really can't see them in the camera. They're just so fast that the, the camera doesn't pick them up. So for artistic reasons, I slowed it down. These are all zero. We want the object orientation of the particle coming out. So this is our particle. You see that the Y axis of the particle is the lengthways here. So we want our particles to emit along, the, along their Y axis. We want the die on hit checkbox and size deflect checks uh, these boxes checked because we're going to need those later we want to render as an object by default this is halo so we want object and then we want to choose the object which is the tracer particle which is this guy so all i did was you know just pick that tracer particle and then the last setting is gravity uh, so under field weights i took gravity way down because otherwise the, the, the particles tend to really drop off as they fly out and Reality is these things are traveling so fast over a long distance that they really look pretty flat in their trajectory. I mean, they eventually obviously do fall down, but uh, it's pretty gradual. All right, and then the particle system on the other gun, you see that there's a tracers.r. So there's a particle system on the right gun barrel, and there's a particle system on the left gun barrel. Let me turn that on. So we got tracer emitter r, tracer emitter l. And these settings are almost identical. Uh, the only difference is that uh, this gun cycle starts five frames after this one. So I added five frames here and five frames here. So if you look at the one, the first one I talked about, it starts on frame two and goes to 497. The left gun barrel, I just added five to two and got seven and then added five and got 502. All the other settings are exactly the same. So let's see what this looks like. I'm going to unhide stuff, and we'll go back to the beginning and start firing. And we need to turn them on. Put that on. That helps. All right. So we can see that they're they're shooting off into space, and they're coordinating with with the barrels. All right. The next thing we want to do is uh, figure out a way to have Blender turn on and off the bullets as they come out of the barrel. So right now the gun's firing and the bullets are coming out and that's fine. But if we go into pose mode and hit Alt R, the gun barrels have stopped moving, but the bullets are still coming out. So we need to figure out a way to, to coordinate that so that when the gun is off, the bullets are coming out. Let's go back into object mode. And we're gonna do that by creating a collision object that's gonna go right here. So I've actually already kind of done that. You can see my, my, my high quality collision object here. It's really just a box, a cube. All right, and I've just placed it across the barrels and the, um, the tracer, the emitters that we built for the particle systems, you can see here's, here's where they are. They're back here. And then the collision object is placed in front of them so that when the tracers get fired off, they're gonna have to go through this box. So what is this box? Well, right now it's just a box. Um, but what we're going to do is we're going to add a, well, we're going to make it a collision object. So I've already done this. Let me do it again. All right, so it's going to be a collision object. You just click on that. And we want to kill particles to be checked. This is going to say that if a particle hits this, it dies. It does not go through it. 
and we want permeability set to zero. Permeability means what are the odds of a particle going through this box. So if it's one, there's a one-on-one -on -one chance it's going to go through. If it's zero, there's no chance it's going through. So if we have this thing here, and now if I turn on the gun again, pose mode, pull the trigger, and if we run the animation, you can see that there are no bullets coming out. But if I take this and move it out of the way, bullets, no bullets, bullets, no bullets. Well, we can do the same thing by using this toggle here. I can turn it on and off. All right, so if I disable the, the blocker, turn it on, then they stop. So what we need to do is we need to put a driver on this, this toggle here and connect it with the position of the trigger. All right, and we've kind of already seen this thing before. So I want to right click on my eyeball there and I want to say add driver and go into here. So we're on the, the collision set uh, toggle switch. So this refers to this. And I want to create a new variable based on this bone. And we want the Z, ro Z rotation local. So as this bone is rotated along its local Z axis, we're going to get data. Now right now it's set to 90 degrees, um, which means that the gun is in a firing mode. All right, so up here, actually, let me rename this. We're going to call this fire gun. That's the name of our variable. And then up here, I want to say false if degrees fire gun greater than equal to 90, else true. So what this is saying is return false if the switch is greater than equal to 90, uh, otherwise return true. True. So, you know, in this position, you can see that it's returning zero, which is false. And then if we go to pose mode, go back up, and then we go back to our thing, you can see that it's returning a one, which is true. And true being turn on the collision object, if that makes sense. So, like, so when the, when the firing switch is up, we want to return a true value, which is going to enable the collision object and then when the gun is firing we move this down 90 degrees the collision object is disabled and that means the, the tracers will fly through it so let's see what that looks like now we run it so right now the gun's firing the tracers are flying through it go into pose mode and hit alt r and everything stops the uh, Gun stop, the tracer stop, and then we can you know, turn it back on simply by dropping it down to 90. So now we just added another feature that we can you know, animate, and all we need to do is we just need to animate the trigger now. And all this other stuff is going to take care of itself automatically. All right, and the last little bit we're going to add here is the muzzle flash that needs to be coordinated with you know, the recoil of the gun. And we only want the muzzle flash to appear just for one frame when the gun shoots back. So to do that, uh, I need to add another bone here um, just so we can get a little bit different measurement. So I'm gonna move my cursor here. I'm going to add another armature and a single bone. I'm gonna move it 90 degrees and I'm just gonna isolate these for a second. And I want to move this new bone so that it's pretty close to lined up with the uh, follower on the cam. So right now we're going to, you know, of course we're going to have two of these, one for the left gun and one for the right gun. So I'm just trying to get that lined up pretty well. All right, that looks pretty good. And uh, I'm going to call this one rocker. I can type dot R. Um, so this is going to be like a, a rocker arm following our you know, the rocker arm is going to be attached to the follower and attached to the cam. Now on this bone, we need to add a bone constraint, and I want to add a damped track. So I need to be in pose mode, damped track, and we want to have a track to this follower. And there's only one bone there, and we want it to track at the head of the bone, like that. So now if we go back into object mode and we run the animation you can see how that rocker just knocks back every time the follower snaps into the cam 
Let me duplicate this guy, move it down, and this one is going to follow the lower one. And let's isolate these for a second. And I'm just going to turn this off for a moment just so I can line them up better. back and we test it and those two rockers should snap back alternately all right so now what we can do is we can we can use this information uh, basically this angle here to determine whether or not uh, this bone has just snapped back which is you know what we're trying to figure out um, when we're going to display the muzzle flash so I have created some muzzle flash geometry already just to save some time uh, quickly go over that. It's got a subdivision on it of three. It has a displacement on it, and the displacement just uses a cloud texture uh, with a very small size, 0 0.05. And if we just turn these off, you can see that the basic shape here, I think it started off as like a 10 sided cylinder that I shaped to a point and then added you know, some extra starry shape here at the back. So that is our shape. And you can see that it's set to global so that as the guns move around, the shape of our flame is going to change based on the global coordinates. It's going to add a little bit more variety. And to add even more variety to them, if we look at the shader that I've created for it, so I've got this shader for it, and I put it into a group because um, there's going to be a left and a right muzzle flash, and they're basically going to have the same kind of stuff going on, um, but there's a little bit of difference because they have to appear at different times, right? You know, this muzzle flash only appears when this gun barrel gets pulled back. This one only appears when this one gets pulled back. So I've created a, a group, and there's going to be an input here, and we'll put a driver on here to control the left and right sides independently. But the common stuff is all inside here. So we take a look at this. So here's the, the muzzle flash shader in its entirety. Over here, under this change flame shape uh, group here, I've created a... Um, a driver called frame number, and that was simply just, you know, you would add a, um, a value node to it. And I'm not aware of any way to, to capture the current frame inside of the shaders, uh, but you can do it simply by putting a driver on here. And if we look at the driver for this value here, um, there's, a, there's a global variable or global value in Blender called frame, lowercase frame. So I created this input value, added a driver to it, and then it just returns the current frame. So if we step through here, you can see that this value just changes to whatever the current frame is. And then I use that number and I multiply it by a large number every time. And that just, all it's gonna do is it's gonna move this noise texture through 3D space so that it's gonna basically look different in every single frame. And then because that Texture is looking different in every frame. You're going to get a little bit different coloring. So this is you've probably seen where you use color ramps to create fire and stuff like that. That's all this does. And then, but more importantly, uh, as this texture gets moved in 3D space because of this, that value gets split and then comes down to a displacement value, so that over time, um, the the shape of the Flame's also going to change. This this displacement's going to change. The height's going to change. That's going to give even more variety. So that if you're when you're rendering your animation and you're looking at the muzzle flash, each one's going to be a little different. You're not going to get repeating the same thing over and over again. It's going to add some interest to it. And then um, the next thing we're going to talk about is this. This is going to be a driver that comes in and it's going to be unique to the left and the right muzzle flashes. Uh, and it's going to return a value of either zero or one, depending on whether or not the gun has just recoiled. So if the gun has just recoiled, it's going to return a value of 1. And then these two things act as switches. So if the gun recoils, it's 1. Otherwise, it's 0. So if it's 1, it's going to return a 1. And 1 times 2, it's going to pass a value of 2 into the density. 1 times 10, it's going to pass a value of 10 into the emission strength. If the gun is not just recoiled, it's going to return a 0. 0 times 2 is 0. 0 times 10 is 0. And basically, by turning the density and the emission strength to 0, this becomes invisible. 
So it's only going to be visible when the gun pops back. So just at that, just the moment that the gun retracts is when the visibility uh, of this muzzle flash appears, and that's based on this driver. So let's work on that, that driver here. So if I get out of that group and come back to here, so I'm going to create an input on a value, and I'm going to plug this into my group, and I'm working on the right muzzle flash right now. And I want to add a driver to this. So now I've added a driver to it. And I can go to the driver editor. We're in the driver editor. We're in the driver tab. Let's kind of scrunch things down here a little bit, but try to make it so you guys can see kind of what's going on here. So we want to use the angle between these bones to determine exactly when it snaps back. So right there, that's, that's the moment in time we want to capture is when it snaps back. And we can actually measure the distance there. All right, so how do we do that? We're going to need two variables. Uh, the first variable is the angle between these two. So I'm going to click on the rotational difference option. And that's going to give me a couple of bones to, or a couple of objects to pick from. So I'm going to choose my rocker and I'm going to choose my follower. And then within these, just pick the bones. There's only one bone to pick. And let's call this angle. And don't worry about that error right now. I'm just going to say one. Um, so we're going to be measuring the angle between here and here. And the other variable we want is to know whether or not the gun is firing or not. So we're going to add another variable. I'm going to call this one fire gun. It's going to be a transform channel. It's going to be this bone. And you know, like before, we're going to use the Z rotation local space and choose the bone. All right, so those are the two variables we need. And right now the gun is in the fire position, so it says 90. So if we take one step forward, you can watch this variable here, it changes from 0 to 0 0.131. So what we want is we want this value here, the driver, to be 1, true, when these conditions are both, both met. So that when it's 90 degrees and when the angle between these two bones is 0 0.131, we want to return a one here, otherwise we want to return a zero, which will just you know, basically make the muzzle flash disappear, hide it. Now we take another step forward, it goes to 0 0.082. So we want a value of 0 0.131 or greater. So let's take a look at our equation then. So we want to return one if the angle is greater than or equal to one or point, 0 0.13 and degrees fire gun greater than or equal to 90 else parenthesis else zero all right so this is going to return a one if the basically if the if this angle here is a bit, it's going to return one if, if the follower has just snapped into the camera which means the gun has just fired and we're also in fire mode, right? So we want that as our equation. So let's take a step forward and see what happens to this value as we step forward. You can see how it turns to zero, and it's zero all the way around the gun until we step and it snaps back in again. So that means that, you know, like I said before, the only time this muzzle flash is going to appear is when this value is one. So that one is gonna feed into this group and it's either going to be visible because it's a one and the density and emission strength are, have a value or it's going to be zero and it's going to be invisible all right so we can do something similar with the left muzzle flash uh, we're going to create an input variable value all right and i can duplicate some of that work i can say right click and i can copy driver and i can right click paste driver, but this is going to be different because it's going to be working on not the right-sided rocker and follower, but it's on the left-sided rocker and follower. So I'm going to have to delete these guys and pick the left side of them, All right, and then choose the bones already chosen, we're good. 
Um, but of course, the angles are going to be different, probably, uh, just because of the way things are. Uh, certainly, the, the fire on off is still going to be 90 degrees. Um, but if we cycle the gun around until we're in the position just before the left gun fires, right, that's where we are now. We take a look at this angle, it's zero, zero, 004, and we take a step forward, and now we're looking at 0.147. So instead of the 0.13, we want something greater than 0.14, let's say. Let's see how that works. So we're, we've, the gun is just, the, the left gun is just fired, the follower snapped into the cam. We take a step forward, this value goes to zero, and that means that the left muzzle flash will now be zero. And because we have uh, this piece of the, fi uh, the equation in here, this fired gun, when we turn off the trigger, and let's go back into the object, into the muzzle flash, right, this is always going to return zero now because this is always going to be false, all right? So we're not going to get any muzzle flash at all when the trigger's in the upright position. So with any luck, let's uh, let's see if that worked. Actually, we're going to have to render to see whether or not that worked because uh, as an object, this is always going to be visible. Let me tell you what, I'm going to, let's go into camera view and let me render, let me render the animation and we'll take a look at how it looks. I'll be back in a minute. Now, before I do that, let me animate to show you how this animation works. So we've got our, our trigger, trigger there, and let's go back to the beginning of the animation. And we're going to go into pose mode, and I'm going to hit I, I to keyframe it, and I'll maybe go forward a couple of seconds, take a step, and change it to 90 so we turn the gun on. A little further, let the gun fire for a bit, take a step, turn the gun off, keyframe it with an eye, go forward a bit, take a step. So I'm just basically pulling the trigger, letting go of the trigger, uh, so that the gun turns on and off. So we can test whether or not everything is, you know, working properly. One more step, zero, eye. All right, so before I actually kill the render, a couple things. Um, this has a texture on it. I forgot to mention it. I often have um, a transparent shader that I put on things. For this blocker to work, it needs to actually be in the scene. You can't actually disable it up here. But for rendering, uh, you want to make sure that it's, it's actually turned on. And just to make sure it never shows up in the renders, I create a, a shader that I call transparent, and all it is is this so that way when we render it you know, you're just never going to see that box it's just going to be invisible uh, but it does need to be in the scene it does need to be activated um, otherwise uh, whether or not the, the uh, collider is on or off is irrelevant uh, if it's not actually activated in the scene so if we do a test run here to see whether or not it's working all right the trigger's off nothing's happening everything's still the trigger goes on um, our rockers are working, our shells are flying out, our guns are animated. Uh, when the rocker turns back off again, or the trigger goes off, everything shuts off. All right, so it looks like it's working. Let me uh, go render a, uh, a quick animation here, and we'll take a look to see how it, how it looks. All right, I'll be back in a minute. All right, the render finished. Uh, let's take a quick look at it and see how it looks. So guns are firing. We've got the muzzle flashes coordinated with the recoil on the gun. Uh, everything turns off properly. We don't see any motion afterwards. So looking good. In the next chapter, we're going to uh, enable the target tracking, which we haven't done yet. So there's another another bone to add here, just like the fire on off bone. Um, but this one will actually control whether or not the, uh, the gun tracks to the target, and we can animate that as well. So that'll be a quick video just on uh, getting the, the gun to track to its target. All right, I'll see you there.